Hey, everybody. Uh, my name's Scott. I'm really excited to be a part of Camp Aldersgate's virtual camp. Today, we're going to be doing a paper mache at home volcano. So, a few things before we get started. First of all, if you weren't aware, today's Earth Day. Now, Earth Day is a holiday where we think about the special relationship we have with the planet Earth, how much we rely on the planet, how much the planet relies on us to act responsibly. Now, normally that would be things like um, following the rules of recycling and being as frugal as possible. And I know things are a little weird right now, things are a little scary at home, but those, the three R's of recycling still apply. So the first R, reduce. Normally we're talking about reducing single-use items as much as possible, especially plastics. Now I know everybody has to be safe. You need to wear masks, you need to wear your latex gloves or some kind of hand covering when you go out. But as much as possible, apart from that, you should be trying to reduce your plastics and your single-use items in general. Reuse, this is something you can still do, especially for your at-home activities. For example, the volcano that we have here is made entirely out of reused materials. The cardboard is from a shipment that we needed for home essentials. The paper was from one, some mail that we didn't need anymore. And the bottle was from a drink that somebody already had. The last is to recycle. With everything going on, luckily right now as essential services, recycling services are still going on. So make sure to separate your trash from your recycling. And if your town requires that you separate your recycling, your papers, your metals, your glasses, and your plastics as needed. So we made a volcano. Does anybody out there know what a volcano is? Uh, to give you a general idea, lots of volcanoes comes in lots of different shapes and sizes and types, but a volcano is a part where the crust of the planet Earth, the very top layer that we live on, has gotten thin, and all the, all the molten rock, all the liquid rock underneath, comes up through and can leak through sometimes or explode through, depending on the situation. So, um, so we've made our own volcano. This required two steps. First of all, our paper mache volcano. So our basis is this bottle that we're gonna be doing the reaction in. And some balls of paper, packing materials that we had left over. And then around it, we did strips of paper, cut paper into strips, and wash it in some uh, solution of water with a little bit of glue and a little bit of flour. And then layered on, and thankfully I had a two-year-old around who's happy to paint it, so it looked a little more like a volcano for you today. The second part is the reaction, what we're actually gonna to use to make our molten rock coming out. Um, so I have the reaction in brief right here. Uh, there's two parts going into this reaction, baking soda and vinegar. You're gonna see me add two other things as well. I'll explain that when I get there. Uh, when we come through this, when we see this sign in chemistry, this essentially just means an equal sign or becomes, like these things become these other things. So we have CO2, which is carbon dioxide gas, which is the same kind of gas that we're gonna breathe out anytime that you breathe in and out. There's H2O, which is just liquid water. There's Na positive, which is a sodium ion. And there's CH3COO negative, which is an acetate ion. Now these three things are what's gonna be left over in kind of a liquid solution at the end. So that's why I just labeled this as leftover solution. And solution is just anything that's in liquid like that. So, a couple steps. First of all, before we do our reaction, make sure you have an adult with you. Luckily I have one here with me. Make sure that you wear the protective, proper protective equipment. You hear a lot about PPE these days. You wear, hear about gloves and masks going out. For this, you're going to need goggles, just to be safe. And then we have a few different ingredients coming in. We have our baking soda and our vinegar, like our reaction details. We also are gonna use dish soap. The dish soap is going to capture this carbon dioxide gas as it comes out and turn it into, turn it into bubbles. And we're going to add a little bit of red food dye just for fun. Great. So you need two teaspoons of dish detergent, two tablespoons of baking soda, just a little bit of food dye, a few drops, and a half cup of vinegar. Now we're gonna add those things in order and I'm gonna redo that, re-say them all as we go. So first I'm going to add the baking soda. Now, if you have a funnel at home, great. If not, if I don't have enough funnel in my house and I'm not going out for anything that isn't essential, you just kind of make it work. All these measurements are approximate. If it's not exactly right, it is okay. 
and then you just kind of dip it in. So that's one tablespoon of baking soda. Here's two tablespoons of baking soda. Great, awesome. The next thing that we're gonna add is our dish detergent. Two teaspoons of dish detergent. Uh, side note to everybody, because you're using your parents' good, good utensils for measuring this out, or your guardian's good utensils, maybe help them out and clean them up afterwards. And add some dish detergent. I also recommend you see how I'm doing this outside. Uh, this may get a little messy on you, so I recommend going somewhere that it's okay to clean, it's easy to clean up. So that's two teaspoons of dish detergent. Got a little bit of food dye. I might go a little heavy handed, I always do by accident with these. Two. That's a lot. Why not? And uh, my understanding is that you can use any kind of vinegar with this. Today, I'm just going to be using just some distilled white vinegar. Um, I know some people at home have like apple cider vinegar or whatever. It should all work the same. It may just smell a little different. Okay. This one's gonna be where it gets a little tricky in terms of. And we should have our lava come out in just about a second. So you can't see it right now, but inside this, I can actually watch this building foam up. It's coming nicely. If anybody has any questions, please feel free either to chat now, to feel free to talk now, or feel free to reach out to Aldersgate via their Facebook or via their email at info at campaldersgate.com. We'll gladly reach out with any kind of questions you have. Oh, and here comes out our lava. I was nice and red. So as you can see, the dish detergent's captured all the CO2 gas in these bubbles. Now it's coming out. If you want to get really fancy with your volcano, you can put culverts and things, like, you know, little digs in it for the lava to run through. This is coming out nicely. Perfect. See people put little put Legos at the bottom as the little people as they move out safely out of the way of the volcano, ideally. Nice. So this is going to keep going until the whoop, up. It's going to keep coming up through uh, until the it uses up all of the baking soda, all the vinegar separate into the carbon dioxide and then the water and the sodium and acetate. Um, and like I said, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out. This is a fun activity we can do at home. We get some nice little explosion. There's some fun prep into building your volcano and dressing it up however you want before you do this. Also, sometimes you can just take a jar and just watch the bubbles build up. You don't necessarily have to have the whole volcano. And if you want, some people do it this way. If you take your bottle, and a balloon if you happen to have a balloon at home. And you put, don't use dish detergent for this one, but if you put your, bake, uh, your vinegar, excuse me, in the bottle, put a little bit of baking soda in the balloon and then put the balloon over the mouth of the bottle and put the baking soda in and you'll fill up the balloon. It's a lot of fun. It's a cool way to fill up a balloon. Afterwards you have a balloon to play with. Um, great. Like I said, everything should be out of materials you have at home, preferably, Reuse materials, everybody. Thank you very much. There are things you, it's important to think about those things, especially on a day like today. I hope you all are able to get out in the sun. And I hope that you all tune into the rest of Aldersgate's virtual camp programming. If you aren't sure what's coming up, go to campaldersgate.com. There's a link right on the homepage for the virtual camp. There's something going on Monday through Friday every day. There's fun lunches with the different directors at camp. There's different afternoon and morning activities going on. Um, they have some really fun stuff planned. So I hope you all had a great day and uh, stay safe out there.